Well, everybody on that team generally pulled for one another to be successful right from the beginning. Everybody, I wouldn't say everybody, we liked each other too, but uh, that season we came together quickly winning on opening day. Believe it or not, that was the biggest game of the season for us if you played on the 88 team because all you guys were going to talk about was if we lost game one was, well, you know, last year we lost 21. So that game was big winning that, and it kind of got the 88 guys out of that funk of starting the season and got the new guys in and everybody believing that we can win right away. And that's pretty much what we did most of the season. Did you ever think anything was possible like 89 coming off of 88? <laughs> Truthfully, you do. Every year, I don't care what team you are, even this year's Oriole team, out of spring training, everybody thinks they can win. It's that we are very professional ball players, are very competitive people that think they can beat the heck out of the next guy. It doesn't always work out that way, but when it starts, we, do, we did believe we can win, and, and we won a lot that year. So what's it like seeing everybody today? It's great. I mean, I, I, I saw a few guys. I saw Mike Devereaux at Fantasy Camp. But I haven't seen Bob Malacki or Phil Bradley I, I, uh, in years and years, 20 or 30 years probably at least. Uh, I see a few of the local guys, you know, Cal, Larry, Billy. But it's always see how guys have changed. Rene Gonzalez, when I first saw him, I said, Rene, is Rene? No, no, it's Rene Gonzalez. You know, it's great to see him. Craig Worthington, haven't seen him in years and years. Uh, Mickey West and all these guys, it just brings back memories. And, and what the, the feeling of having the camaraderie with a fraternity, well, with players is, you know, it brings it back to you. You said everybody generally liked each other. That was what made it so special. I mean, when you get together with them today, is it almost like transporting your guys back to 30 years ago? Or is it you can feel a difference or no? Uh, it's almost like you don't skip a beat. You know, everybody's changed in a lot of ways, but you remember how they were back then. And it's like everybody's just like it was way back then. You know, special relationships. You don't get with a lot of people in your life. You might have a few people where you haven't seen them in 15 years and you see them and it's like it was tomorrow or yesterday or whatever. That's what it is with a baseball team. And uh, it's good to get that feeling once in a while. Do you see, do you see any similarity with the team here now, looking back at 88, what you went through in 88, and this, this team last year and this year kind of going through, broke the 88 loss record last year and trying to climb back? Well, yeah, 88 was my first year with the Orioles, so I was like one of the new guys on a, and it turned out I contributed to a, a bad team. But right now, some of these guys on this team that they're playing right now are going to be with this team when they get good. And that might be next year or more likely four or five years from now. And it'll be a, a great feeling for them uh, when they make that transition. Joe, I hope I answered that. I don't know. Joe, the link with the fans back in those days, could you talk oh. about that compared to what it is like today? People watch the game. I mean, people come to the game with their cell phone. They don't watch the game. Uh, people back then, I think, knew baseball better, you know, because they watched the game, they studied, they scorecarded it. Uh, today, I think it's more a, of a social event, which is not a bad thing. But I just think the fans were more involved with actually watching the ball game, knew their players, knew their stats, knew where they were from. I think right now you come here and you do what the young people do now. They get on their phones and exchange information and watch a little bit of the game. Wasn't there more of a pure relationship between players and fans back then compared to today? Where I think fans feel like these players are making so much money, I want my piece by getting his autograph and selling it. I don't know about that. I think the real fans still show up. I really appreciate the autograph from the player. I see the players really accommodating the fans. Uh, you would think a guy making $20 million a year would say, to heck with you, I don't need to bother with you. But no, that's not the case. The modern-day players give autographs freely and willingly and I think are good to the fans, and I think the fans appreciate that.